Hello everyone, welcome back to my MMO show. This is going to be episode 4 about Final Fantasy XIV, the latest updates, as well as future uh, implementations for 1.19, and what I think the game actually needs in the direction that Na Naoki Yoshida should indefinitely be taking instead of what he's been doing right now, which is a lot of people pleasing. Okay, 1.19. 1.19 is going to see the arrival of airships, and I'm standing right out here in Gridania, north of uh, Camp Emerald Moss, and this is a... let me turn down the volume real quick, it's a little too loud. Mixer, come on, mixer, 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 Final Fantasy, turn down. That's a little too low. Like a little ambient music in the back. Okay. Alright, let's go. Okay, airships. These are the airship docks that are going to be located in and around certain uh, far away camps so that people can actually go to these and really, you know, spend less time running through all this stuff as well as the implementation of mounts in, in the form of rental mounts for chocobos. Naoki Yoshida did say that at, one, at some point in time in the future that you'll be able to raise or purchase your own chocobo so that you can summon it on command and travel via that route. You can also jump on airships which will probably be on maybe 5, 10, 15 minute timers that will cycle through different ports and uh, mass transport people. Uh, he also stated that there are going to be cutscenes as well as a lot of different uh, doodads that are going to be in effect to give you that really uh, nice appeal of, of showing up to a new port or waving goodbye on another one. Now, combat. Combat did come back out in 1.18 and it has been changed for the better. It's a little slow right now and it's a little off in terms of damage calibration and healing calibration and things like that. They still need to work out that and that's going to come in the second part. Uh, right now you have to pretty much uh, unsheathe your weapon like I've already done, casting my buffs. Uh, go ahead and um, lock on and hit one of your hotkeys to actually get the battle in, into uh, this. Now, he, right there I evaded, I mean he evaded my attack given that I'm a very high rank compared to this uh, character. I'm still missing and evading pretty high. Uh, he stated that he is going to be changing that in the next uh, 1.19 patch and increasing the, the accuracy behind characters significantly so that people can actually go and conduct combat in a more efficient manner. As well as creating animations, like if you're looking at that right now, before I used to have to stop like that and then run again. Now I can actually move and sheath. Yet uh, he's working on different unique animations for combat, so that you know, elves, male elves, female elves, uh, other races will have their certain uh, unique battle styles, as well as uh, ability motions as well. So there's a lot of work going into the battle system, which I really enjoy. I really do expect. Uh, Naoki Yoshida to do a good job on the battle system and let's hope that he works on that first and foremost. I know that he has his fingers uh, in a lot of different developmental jars right now in terms of Final Fantasy XIV, but right now I think he needs to focus development on certain areas, get them complete, and then go on to the next. Like I said, people pleasing. People pleasing has been happening a lot. Uh, I'm guilty of it. Yeah, he's guilty of it. Because we ask for quests, he gives us quests. We ask for dungeons, he's given us dungeons. We ask for transportation, he's given it to us in 1.19. But, you know, guys, I think we really need to let him do his job and let him finish the game in uh, a set pattern. First and foremost, iron out the battle system. Second of all, create a timeline of sequential events that actually happened in Eorzea. Give us all a, a, a rich... Um, entry into this world figure out why these wolves are so pissed off look how crazy they look and then um work on the uh the lore a little bit more get you really hyped up about it not just showing up in Ulda on the back of a chocobo carriage uh really give you some more stuff after that uh third and uh most important give people a quest flow from level one to level 50 
give people quests in Gridania, Limsa, Lamensa, and Ulda that take them from maybe in this first area of, 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 of places that you're going to remodel eventually. Like he said, he's not going to incorporate all this anymore. He's going to totally have the world builders re-evaluate these maps and re-do uh, uh, the world over again to make it a lot more unique. But back to the level flow. Level flow needs to happen. Like maybe this will be a level 1 through 10 zone. This will be a 10 through 15 zone. This Emerald Moss way up here will be a 15 through 21 or 22 zone. And then maybe this will be a 22 through 25. And this will be a 25 through 27. And then use uh, places like... Like... Uh, Corthos and uh, Mordona as the level 40, 30 through 50 zones. So that, you know, people not only get a break away from monotonous grinding on mobs, because that does really get old, and give them more of an ability to explore via quests and missions and different endeavors like that, so that, you know, people don't get bored and, and things just really start happening for this game. Now you take a look at damage calibration and, and the delay behind it, it's going to be recalibrated like I did say, and it's also going to be based on the removal of the physical level system. Physical levels and the, the, the ranks of your certain jobs are going to be uh, implemented into one so that if you're a rank 29 gladiator like myself, my attributes and my uh, different elemental affinities will be allocated automatically based on what a gladiator should need. Just if I should turn into a conjurer, they would change and they would be allocated to what a conjurer needs. So you can expect those kind of good implementation changes made as well as the claiming system. The claiming system is going to be totally different. Hopefully in the future you'll be able just to right click that and go in and start attacking without having to do all this uh, hit F, then lock on, then press hotkey so that your attacks can go off. And you know, that that's quite a long time for an animation to go off just for that one ability. So there's that. In terms of armor, let's talk about armor. Okay, everyone has nice pretty shiny armor. Let's see what it could do. Right now, gear is gonna be going under some itemization. It's it doesn't have that wow factor right now where you're looking at your armor and you're saying, Wow, this thing, this uh chest place plate really adds a lot of strength and dexterity that I need into my class. It's kind of mediocre stats right now. It has a condition bar which tells me the condition of my armor, tells me uh, if it's unique or not, but no rarity, no optimal system. That's coming in the next patch. Optimal meaning that if it's red, it's way too high for me to wear. It's not going to be as effective as something that would be green. Green which means it's around my level, it's the best thing that I can equip right then and there, and it's going to be 100% efficient. Now that's awesome. Uh, in terms of rarity, they're going to be having three rarities. One being uh, white. White is going to be more along the lines of common armor, things that you can make. And then they're going to go to green, which is uncommon. And then blue is going to be the superior, really rare armor that's really, really good, has a lot of great stats on it. It's going to really forward your character to be really efficient and powerful. That's really nice and awesome. Um, in terms of that, uh, deaths and dying are going to be damaging your armor. It's a death penalty included with the timer that, that you take when you get fatigued from death. So basically, you're not going to be able to be standing behind a tank and durability is just going to be based on your spells and abilities. It's going to be based on dying and getting hit and all that other good stuff just like it should be now another feature that's coming out in 1.19 is beastman strongholds beastman strongholds are basically areas of the map that are populated by incredibly tough uh monsters and beastman tribes that uh, have tons of riches and treasure chests scattered about it's up to you to go into those areas with a group of, of people that are, you know, of higher skill and higher rank. A lot of this content is being focused around rank 50. And you're going to be able to go into those areas and really explore, really do some group 
real good group play. Guilt Leaves. Guilt Leaves are going to be seeing a revision. A revision of uh, a cooldown of 12 hours, yet you are only allowed to take 4 leaves per those 12 hours. Which is pretty decent. You know, 36 hours and you only got 8 to do. Now it's 24 hours and 8, but it's pretty much going to be the same thing, except uh, if you take a leave and you fail it four times in a row then you know you just used all your four chances on that one leave um go same thing goes for abandoning leaves if you abandon it you forfeit a allocated uh leave for that uh cooldown period as far as 1.19 uh patch updates go job specific quests creation of quests to unlock jobs and their abilities and let's just hope that Neo Kiyoshida does a smart thing, gives us quest flows, gives us a lot of immersion and a lot of lore, a lot of high quality cutscenes. Because right now, Guild Wars is going that route of smoke, or Guild Wars is just it's amazing. Everything will have automatic hitches and hinges in the game. Let's just say uh, I, I'm running down this area right now, and this thing's charging. It's not charging me, it's charging some guy, and that guy is not gonna have a little question mark above his head he's just gonna say help me help me you kill him you automatically accept the request the rest of my town's under attack let's go run down this way and go help him you gotta kill as many as are down the road quest completed unknowingly you're like oh yeah thank you very much here's some coins for getting rid of all those guys along the way you get to the town the town's under siege you gotta do all this stuff it's it's gonna be that dynamic in guild wars 2 now in in Final Fantasy 14 it, it needs to take that approach the approach that World of Warcraft has been starting to take as well in, in their end game zones where uh, you've seen a lot of stuff in Uldum in Uldum and in uh, the beginning areas of of uh, the Zandalar um, God the Goblin and the Worgen starting areas you saw a lot of cutscenes there you need to have a lot more like that in Final Fantasy 14 uh, all, for all that I can say, I think the game is, is in a very playable state, yet you can do a lot of catching up. However, they did pose the big question of, if, if you were willing to start over again, would you? And I think, I really think that they're, they are going to go that route. Because in the time that has been spent between the re the launch and the the day it's actually going to be 100% playable with all those things that I just said and all these new and nice uh, storylines and battle systems that are going to be implemented and, and different endeavors like uh, um, God, I can't even think about it ah, Grand Companies, there we go you know, there's just going to be that that reroll RTM is going to have stockpiled ore, they're going to have stockpiled gill, they're going to just totally ruin and decimate the, the, the community like that. On the other hand, Square Enix could say, well, you know what, this Link show has been around for a while. The only thing we may ask of you is to empty your, your, uh, your resource banks in terms of gill, in terms of items and we'll let you keep your nice polished characters with your loot with your items and things like that but we ask you to greatly respect uh the economy that's to come out and you know give you an option to to take away all that i know it's a lot but you know what guys when this game does launch and it's it, it is everything that we wanted it to be you know that's gonna that's gonna be the deciding factor on, on how good the the community is based on its economic development and its economic prowess from the past months of certain link shows so with that in mind i really am going to give this a, a good shot once it does reach good um implementations of the new level up system as well as the battle system changes it's looking good i like the feel of the auto attack i like the feel of of the spells and abilities just a little bit more tweaks here and there and i'm probably going to be jumping in here to do some some uh, grinding and things like that 
but yeah, that's my advice to Naoki Yoshida, and let's hope that, you know, he has the same people there at his company saying, well, maybe we shouldn't be sticking our hands in too many jars. Let's focus on one branch. So, thank you for watching. Uh, please rate and subscribe. If you don't see another Final Fantasy XIV based video, it's because uh, nothing new has came out. It's been long month stretches between uh, different updates. And thank you for watching. Peace out.